Now, a damning report into how children struggling with their gender identity have been treated says the NHS has let them down. The historic CAS report recommends holistic and personal care for children over hormone treatments and puberty blockers. The Prime Minister has said that the findings show a need for extreme caution regarding children's gender care. Of course, we must treat children who are questioning their gender with compassion and sensitivity. But we have to recognise that we need to move with extreme caution in these areas uh, because we just simply don't know the long term impacts of what this all means. And children's well-being is uppermost in our mind. Well, that was the Prime Minister earlier, and I'm now joined by GB News reporter Ray Addison. Ray, this is an historic report, a big breakthrough. What's it recommending? 32 recommendations in total, Martin, and you mentioned it there, that word holistic. Dr Cass, very keen to stress to NHS England that young people who are being referred for these services need to be considered for other types of screening, so mental health assessments and checks for conditions such as autism as well, before they even start going down any kind of uh, change or reassignment uh, of their gender. Also, uh, she's urging for extreme extreme caution before prescribing hormones for children. She says there needs to be a really clear rationale uh, for their prescription uh, to anyone who is under the age of 18. And there should be a separate pathway for, of care, she says, for anyone who is yet to hit puberty. And finally, uh, full research into the outcomes of young people who've had this kind of treatment and full research for young people moving forward as well for anyone who's having this treatment to see what happens happens to them in the future, whether it works, uh, whether it fails and uh, what their thoughts on it so that they can better uh, use that information to treat people in the future. And Ray, how quickly do you think the report's findings will actually become NHS policy? How soon will it be enacted? Well, there's no indication really that all of these findings are going to be implemented. I've been speaking to NHS England's press office today. As I said, 32 recommendations, but no commitment at this stage to implement all 32. They say they're going to review them and then they're going to move forward. I mean, a, a lot of things have changed over the last few years already based upon, you know, interim reports and recommendations so far. However, there simply isn't a, a, a time scale and, and any kind of idea whether all 32 will be implemented and a lot of people will feel very critical of that. OK, thank you very much for joining us, Ray. And now I'm joining me, join me in the studio. Sorry, I'm joined now by transgender teacher and journalist Debbie Hayton. Debbie, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. So the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, earlier on said um, he welcomes Dr Katter's expert review. Um, he said the well-being and the health of children must come, for, come first. It's being heralded as a breakthrough by many people who've been asking for a more critical, analytical and logical approach. But of course, it's being treated with much trepidation by those in the trans community. What's your take? Well, I welcome this report. We've needed it for a long time. This is an impartial report written by uh, written by a clinician who has no part in the in the deb political debate that's been going on. What she who she cares about is children. Children at the centre of this report, and that's right. And there are a great number of children still waiting in the system for treatment. About fifteen thousand. What happens to them now? Well, local local NHS mental health services need to step up and take and and help those children. One of the uh, one of the issues which you've been seeing is children just being lost in waiting lists, endless waiting lists, waiting for this magic treatment that will perhaps solve all their problems, or so that they've been led to believe. Uh, it's no help to children, is that? Uh, my concern is that where where have those children perhaps been going for help? Private providers have been stepping into this and and providing and providing treatment. And what is worrying is that the cast review doesn't apply to private providers. They can carry on prescribing hormone blockers, uh, cross sex hormones to under 18s, uh, irrespective of what Dr. Cass has said here. That's a concern that the government needs to look into. And what do you think should be done about private practitioners who ostensibly then would be going outside of NHS recommendations? Well, I think we need to look at legislation. Children need protecting. If it's mm. illegal to sell a packet of cigarettes to a 16-year-old, 
why should we be uh, supplying 16-year-olds with drugs which will have permanent and possibly life-changing impact on their developing bodies? Uh, how did we get here? I think we're in a situation that uh, uh, we're trying to extract ourselves from, but we should never have been here in the first place. Uh, we should have been listening to uh, impartial clinicians and not political activists 10 years ago. And Debbie, one of the key findings of the CAS report is that trans um, identifying patients are more likely to experience trauma or neglect and abuse or more likely to be on the autistic spectrum. Is that helpful from an analytical diagnostic point of view or may it further stigmatise these patients? But this is this is what. Hillary Cass has found out that these are these are facts, these are statistics, and it does nobody any help at all to deny the truth. Uh, what we perhaps should be asking is why does there seem to be an overlap perhaps between autism and transgender identification young people? That's the scientific curiosity that the medical profession should have been engaged in, not uh, sweeping it under the carpet and applying a sticker, a one-size-fits-all sticker of gender identity and gender dysphoria on these children who may have had uh, multiple and complex needs that they're, they're dealing with. Thank you very much, Debbie Hayton, transgender teacher and journalist, and always welcome on the show with your forthright opinions. Thank you very much.